everyone to a show of great proportions and even greater portions. You'll laugh, you'll cry, maybe even projectile vomit. This is no dying time! I had never been so berated by someone in my life. 
he was me. We were nine. Now, every time I hear the word sequel, I think of squeakle. I guess, in a sense, I hope that this show has the same effect on you all tonight. That every time when you hear the phrase, no time to die, you'll think of me and this show. And how it slightly altered the little juices in your head. But like in a good way. If at some point during the show you literally feel the liquids in your head turning, that is not me. Go see a doctor. <laughs> you know, I, it's actually really convenient. We have a sponsor here tonight that actually can help with problems like that. Uh, please welcome them. And enjoy No Die to Time. Has this ever happened to you? Hello? Now what? Oh, sure, I'll hold. Emergency services always making you wait? Well, wait no more with Nick Cannon Emergency Services. <laughs> we are the fastest responding assist assistance this world has ever known. Watch as this caller tries our service instead. Hello? Nick Cannon, sir. Wow, you got here really fast. That's right. World's fastest responders. If you even use our service one time, we'll respond quicker to any sort of scenario we deem an emergency. Like this. Jeez, I gotta call Wait, what? <laughs> Undeniably medically superior. Just to clarify, Nick Cannon Services is not owned or operated by Nick Cannon. We're just called that because we come faster than he does. <laughs> Which is saying a lot. <laughs> Give it a shot sometime. Whenever you feel uneasy or bored or dumb. Or bored. What? What are you guys doing here? I didn't call you. We're so fast, we arrive before injuries happen. Before? What are you? Ow! <laughs> Child, Anchor Al, that number seems a bit too large for me. That's right, Reporter Ray. Fifteen is much larger than the desired amount of children, which is none. <laughs> Reports say she's already working on number sixteen. Sixteen? Good lord! She is Catholic. Oh, this is been regular news. Tune in later to regular news where we're talking about something boring, like the stock market or how you are solely responsible for the economy. <laughs> Four contestants, three courses, and only one chance to win. Our chefs need to cook three dishes using four ingredients from the basket we picked at random before time runs out. One by one, they will face the cleaving table until only one of them remains. Who will win? And who will be chopped clean? <laughs> this is clean. Let's be our contestants. Hi, my name is Madeline Kicker. I'm from Ontario, Canada, and I'm so excited to be here. I do all my cooking for my family, a family of cooks, but I mostly look after my three little boys, Lilo, Lilo, and Pope Pius the Ninth. <laughs> Bonjour, my name is Von Burel. I am from Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> I know I'm going to win this competition. People just don't see food the way I do. People don't taste food the way I do. People don't ask his judges the way I do. I will do whatever it takes to win. My name is Jürgen Jürgen. For 40 years I've been training for this moment. My ancestors gave me the strength to cook anything. I spent my early years living in the streets making steak from raccoon. <laughs> then calamari made from spiders. 
souffle from trash sponges. My father, Flergen Gergen, died trying to get on this show. I'll never forget his final words as he rests on the Viking boat. He tell me, Jürgen Gergen, son of Flergen Gergen, your mother, Turgen Gergen, and brothers, Bergen Gergen, Wurgen Gergen, Sergen Gergen, Hergen Gergen, and Hank, all depend on you to represent the family of Gergen, or as we call it, the Famgen Gergen. So, so I stand here to prove our worth to the world. I will crush the competition or die trying. Uh, I, I don't know how to cook. I just work at the Starbucks next door. I think I might have taken my own. Chefs to your stations. The first round, the entree. Using four ingredients in this basket, Chef, you must create a dish that is not unlike an entrance to your main course. Oh, is that why they call it that? What? You know, like an entree. It sounds like enter, like a little bit. You know, like you know, your food like enters the meal or like enters your mouth. I never thought of that. That makes sense. I knew that. I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm going to win. Chefs, please. Your four ingredients. Oh, are... like enter the food. <laughs> <laughs> your ingredients are a banana that may or may not be right. Heinz mayo chuck. <laughs> a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> and a live frog. <laughs> Fifteen minutes on the clock. Time starts now. <laughs> Normally, this is when I talk to the judges, but uh, they're not here. They left all their houses at midnight last night and never returned. <laughs> so, let's see what our contestants are up to. What are you cooking for, uh, me, Madeline? Well, Alton Brown. That's not my name. All the ingredients reminded me of home at the age of 14, when Papa would get the grill out and Mama would get the other grill out, and then our cousins would meet us at the lake with the grandparents, and then they'd get their grill out, and then all the grills are out, and we'd just start a fire. <laughs> Cook burgers or sausage? No, we'd actually start a fire. You see, ten grills is a lot for some small trees. Oh my god! <laughs> ben, what are you cooking today? Uh, ben, I've got something I like to call a pâte de serpent, a somme with a little bit of sauce, banana, and tanka, uh, and the cream. It's a winner, chef. I didn't understand any of those words. <laughs> How are you going to use the cigarettes? Uh, well, it's warm, so I'm going to smoke it. I see. <laughs> Here again, how about you? I'm making frog. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Then why ask? <laughs> uh, and you? I don't know. I, I lost my frog. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> One exciting competition this is at. This is turning out to be almost as exciting as being a jazz pianist and a jazz club. Jazz. <laughs> like, like, like being like a Hollywood actor or something? Sure. Anyway, time's up. Hands off your plates. Just bring your plates over here. Your work has to make an entree with a banana, mayo chunk, cigarettes, and a frog. Let's see how you did. Madeline, you seem to have made a burger. That's right, Polly Flay. I used the frog as the meat, the banana and cigarettes grind it up into a sauce, and then the condiment as a condiment. <laughs> Lovely star, Madeline. Ben, I'd ask what you made, but I don't want to hear you say any of those words ever again. Oui, chef. Merci beaucoup, chef. <laughs> that just looks like pasta. Just say that next time. Jurgen, you just cook the frog. Yes. It's just a burnt frog. Yes. <laughs> Where are the other ingredients? Jürgen Gergen does not need more ingredients. Frog is good for digestion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, fourth guy. My name's Connor. Okay. You didn't ask earlier, I just thought you I don't know. What did you make for us? Sandwich. <laughs> Judges what they think, but the search party still has it located. <laughs> so I'll just pick one. Without eating them? Please. I never eat the food. I'm too pretty for that. <laughs> uh, can you just turn around, Alex?
You're good. I'm sorry, but you have been cleaned. Judges? Right. <laughs> I just didn't use all the ingredients, and that's, that's enough to disqualify you. Here, pack your bags. Oh, you're not. Did you pack any? You stop of a bitch! Any thoughts on your devastating loss? You know it was a good effort. <laughs> I gave it my own. My father, Flurgen Gergen, would be proud. Maybe next time. Or perhaps one of my 24 cousins will enter. Like Pergen Gergen, Sergen Gergen. Cut the commercial. Pergen Gergen. Cut it. Hey, Braz, you get any action lately? No. I was talking to them. Anyway, <laughs> we're here to help. Here are some pickup lines that are 100% guaranteed to get you some whammies. Also, girl is now a gender neutral term. Take it away. <laughs> Damn, girl, you my Apple MacBook when I plug it in, because you're really hot. <laughs> Damn, girl, the French forgot one. Liberty, equality, and shopping. <laughs> Girl, you're the Capricola to my Capricola sandwich. You see, it's not a Capricola sandwich if there's no Capricola. It's necessary for the requirements presented by the sandwich. <laughs> Damn, girl, you my childhood hamster, because why are you running away from me? <laughs> Damn, girl, you a licensed dermatologist? Because I got this bump on my arm, and I was wondering if you could take a look at it. I couldn't find a dermatologist in Pennsylvania, because uh, it has the fewest, has the fewest uh, fucking dermatologists per capita in the country. Girl. <laughs> Damn, girl, are you meth? It was like, you have any meth? <laughs> Did you get us some meth? Those don't work on anyone. Don't blame us. Blame your lack of charisma. And probably the bump on your arm, because it's like a serious issue. I know about this. That tea was poisoned, and now 
You'll pay for speaking words unfound in the Bible and also rather confusing. That's an odd <laughs> motive. No! Carol! This is no time to die! Actually, it's, a, it's no die to time. So I just, I swap the words around. No, it's a little, it's a pound word. What is that? Get down! Go! Be quiet! Whoa. Well done. I think we scared him off. Carol, you live! Oh, yes, it was just the wrong pipe. Drat. Drat? <laughs> People didn't start saying that until the 1900s. Jane, how did you know that, you Einstein? Einstein? Why, he won't be alive for at least another five years. All right, all right. Raise your hand if you're a time traveler. <laughs> OMG, slay. I thought it was just me. <laughs> Who wants to go build the Berlin Wall? <laughs> Strong men and put them on display, potentially giving them power to commit atrocities. It's a dangerous event. Welcome, everyone, to NFL Draft Day! <laughs> I've been watching ever since OJ Alfred, since I've seen threats in the public like Ben Roethlisberger, Deshaun Watson, and Bruno Mars. <laughs> Bruno Mars, sir, but he's just, he's but a singer. Yeah, I know, but he killed it at his Super Bowl performance. <laughs> I need to be aware of all kinds of killings, because I hate killings. I'm bad. <laughs> I've never liked American football. Too many concussions, sir. <laughs> I forgot you were British. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the Chicago Bears are picking. And the Bears take Rodney Byrne! Uh, Master Wayne, is that a disappointment? No, of course not. I don't care. I'm here for justice. And Justice Allen is the Green Bay Packers pick. Not that justice, you know, it's a, a, the law thing. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I know, Mr. Wayne. You, you know, there's, there's no shame in liking football, sir. You're allowed to have hobbies despite being an orphan. <laughs> Batman doesn't have hobbies, Alfred. All I do is be the knight of the night. That's why the, they call me the Bat Knight of Dark. I'm Batman. <laughs> I, I thought they call you the Dark Knight, Yasta Fane. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> the Gotham Knights are picking. And the Gotham Knights pick. Edward Puzzle! Let's go! <laughs> Master Wayne, is this a, a bright mood I see? No! Just Batman. I'm so happy to see Justice go. Not bad. Edward Puzzle is morally good, I hear. <laughs> Puzzle, sir? Wait a second. Oh my god, it's the Riddler! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I should have known I'm a detective, master detective on Batman. <laughs> What's that? The Gotham Knights have traded up for the next pick, and they're going with Oswald Penguino. No! That's the Penguin! Don't pick the Penguin! The disguises are fooling them just as good as mine. I'm Batman. Well, the Gotham Knights have another pick, and they're going with the Joker. Wow, this is straight up the Joker. Ah! My back senses are tingling. Why do they get so many picks? Oh. So many football players die in Gotham. This is not a safe place at all. <laughs> but we can't pick these criminals. 
Gangster Jane. Maybe they're just really good players. They're all criminals. What are they plotting? <laughs> Batman. Our evil plan is in motion. We are going to play like dog shit. <laughs> and bring the Gotham Knights down in the mountains. No! Not the Gotham Knights! My parents, who are dead, love the Gotham Knights. I have no other connection to them. A Batman. Papa Dwayne, surely this is not the worst outcome. We know you're a fan, Batsy. We saw you at the last game. Oh no. They must have seen you as Bruce Wayne, Guaga Ray. <laughs> we saw you in full bat gear watching. You had stadium seats and spilled soda on everyone. <laughs> Sir, you went to a game in your full Batman attire. You wouldn't understand. The Knights gotta represent the Knights. I must go, Alfredo. The Gotham Knights need me. on what we should be concerned about. Uh, but the solutions have to be and include what we are doing in terms of going forward in terms of investments. Wow! <laughs> that was the whole answer. Nothing. <laughs> no joke, it's a real response, like eating cereal without the cereal bits. Yeah, someone really said that. This has been Breaking News. lover. Anyway, Jack has allowed me to come out in public finally and present to you something that was thought to be lost a long time ago. You see, the art of filmmaking was developed a long time ago, but the art of sound making was developed a less long time ago. Thus the silent film. Here's a silent film we just found randomly outside. It's called Speed. No, not that one. <laughs> Enjoy.
Man, silent films suck. <laughs> Thank God they invented sound. I only wish my cow of a wife, Jack Johnson, would shut up. <laughs> uh, hey, everyone. So, there's been a lot of goofs, gas, gargles, but we had to cut a lot of zany characters in the show in order to make it work. Like, as much as I wish you could see everything that we came up with, uh, it would be too many bits, it would be too long, you'd be here all night. Um, so to make up for it, I told the cast that they could kind of just like, do all of their individual bits right here, at the same time right now, so just... <laughs> Alright guys, you can come out. Yeah! Yeah! Hi. I'll play <laughs> Welcome back to Cleve. We've got Madeline, Van, and that guy. And it's time for round two, the entree. Wait, wasn't the entree the last round? No, that was the appetizer round. I don't know, I did that whole like intern entree bit. Jeff, yes. please. <laughs> Let's open the basket. Your ingredients for the appetizer entree round are maple syrup. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. <laughs> and mayonnaise. It looks like mayonnaise. Yeah, I see that. Well, I guess that's the thing with Cleve. The suspense and wonder, how will our chefs deal with this? Ah, oh, fucking hell. 15 minutes on the clock, time starts now. Again, uh, Normally, the judges would give their stunning mayo input here, but the police just won't tell us what happened. Means <laughs> more chit chat. Madeline, what are you cooking today? Well, Guy Fieri, I've gone with my good old family grill again. <laughs> Great. Like hot dogs this time? Or? Sure. <laughs> Madeline, you're not making a burger again, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, uh, Van, what are you be cooking for us today? Just for you and for me to win. <laughs> I'll be making seared scallop with baby spinach and spiced pomegranate glaze accompanied by a gulag fish. You got all that from syrup and mayo? Yes, Chef, I will do this. Has anyone told you you look nice today, Chef? <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, Charlie? Hardly working or hardly working? Dude, I don't know why I'm still there. I am not a cook. I have always wanted to be an actor, but even after like a hundred auditions, I've gotten nothing. Acting, you say? I have a passion myself. I've always wanted to be a jazz king, but I can't get good jazz gigs nowadays. <laughs> Only 80s cover bands and Christmas-themed restaurant music. <laughs> wow, we have so much in common. You know, why, why are you even hosting this show? Time is up, chef! Step away from your place. Bring your plates up here. All right, chef, this is a tough dessert round. But let's see how you did it. Madeline, Madeline, this is a burger. Not just any burger, Paula Dean. It's a Canadian burger. <laughs> specific? No, whatever. Well, I can guess where the mayo went. Oh, I forgot to use 
the mayo. You forgot the mayo for a burger? Okay, what about the syrup? <laughs> I see. Van? Oh my god, this looks really good. Thank you, we oui, chef. How did you use the ingredients? Well, you see, I tenderized the mayo and bird fed the soup into the dish. It was really simple, you see. Greg, did you just stack the fucking ingredients? I don't know <laughs> what you want to see. Greg, it's pretty unreasonable. Well, technically, you used all the ingredients. Yeah. All right, turn around. One of them is on the cleaning block. Necessity with Bear Stapleton. I am Bear Stapleton. This is the only show where we learn the necessities for living through interviews with experts on life. You know, I have some experience. Nobody asks me anything. Just saying. Anyway, today I'm joined by Icarus Van Clyde. Icarus, uh, say something interesting. Uh, hi. I could have done that. You know what I would have said? I'm sorry. Bless you. I would have said, <laughs> interviewer, I have so much to tell the world. I can see the paint in the world. Not literal paint. Just art. I'm twain in two because I'm special. What? Nothing. Nobody cares. Tell us about yourself, Icarus. Right, well, uh, I, I study cancer research. I would say, but there's so much pain. <laughs> I would say I can help you. I wouldn't say, just give me your credit card number. I said I'm on this side of the scene, asking questions like, what made you pursue this career? That's <laughs> actually a funny What story. inspires you? What drives you? Why are you the way you are? It all started with loss, I tell you, loss! <laughs> oh, Milfred, how I miss you. I miss your dazzling coat, your petite body, and I miss the way your eyes beamed at me as you licked my feet. <laughs> There's no for the dog. Ah, she wore that leash. Gotta be a dog. If only you stayed away from that drill press milfred. <laughs> you never listened to me, you bitch. Is that, is that bitch literal, or...? You wouldn't know anything about loss, would you, Icarus? Uh, well, Mr. Bear, there was actually one time... You failed, didn't you, Icarus? You tried too hard to hurt yourself. I know the feeling. I, too, like Icarus, Icarus, flew too close to the Saturn. I'm pretty sure it was uh, too close to the sun. Saturn is nowhere near the sun, Icarus. <laughs> what would you know? 
My name's literally... I've been to full life, damn it! I deserve the interview. I deserve more than this putrid life gives to me. I cannot carry on. We must conclude the show. This has been the necessity with Bear. Hey, Mr. Bear, can I ask you a question? What? A question? For me? Am I being interviewed? Oh, joyous den! Thank you, Icarus! Non google it, Kesto! Ask away! Why isn't your show called The Bear Necessities? Yeah, like the, the song from the Jungle Book? Yeah, like the Bear Necessities. <laughs> you mock me. You sit there and tease me. Is this what it's like? Is it, Icarus? How dare you? You disrespect me on bare necess necessity with bear. <laughs> Even after I shared with you my past wife's demise. Wait, you said it was your wife? <laughs> you have flown too close to the sun, Icarus. That's what I said. That's the story. Silence. <laughs> Hell hath no fury like a bear stapleton scorns. <laughs> Sprite. Sprite, you hear me? Get this shit out of my sight. Can you believe this? I can't believe this. I bet they didn't give you the wrong drink, dirty bastards. <laughs> hey, you probably already noticed, but this guy's kind of annoying. Can I change seats or something? Oh, don't worry, miss. We have a protocol for this. Okay. Beep, 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 boop, 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 boop. Sir, please quiet down. We're out of Sprite. Not until I get my drink. Sir, I'll have to call the co-pilot. Mr. Simmons! Sir, please, you're disturbing the passengers. And? I don't care. <laughs> Sir, if you keep this up, I'll have to call the pilot. Marv! <laughs> Sir, as the pilot of this plane, I'm asking you to be reasonable. Uh, wait, you're the what? Oh, don't worry. I propped the wheel with a stick. <laughs> Please, sir, you're being unruly. I want my Sprite. Well, don't say we didn't warn you. Oh, hey, what's going on? What is this? You still want that Sprite now? Yes, Sprite or I fight. Oh, this one's got spirit. No, different airline. Looks like we need backup. Co, co-pilot. <laughs> Who is this? Who is this? Are you mocking me? Are you mocking me? <laughs> <laughs> I want a Sprite. I want a Sprite. <laughs> la, 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 la. All right, this isn't working. This isn't working. All right, I'm gonna have to call him the Co 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 Pilot. Rich, here, put these on. What is he listening to? Donda by Kanye West. <laughs> Hey, I kind of like this. Oh, fuck! <laughs> ah, come on, that's all you got. Sprite or fight! Sprite or fight! <laughs> this is your final warning, sir. Dude, just stop. Sprite or fight, do your worst. All right, Sammy, get out here. Is that a bucket of water? What? <laughs> 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 Oh, so I can get some water, but not Sprite. Sprite or fight? If you say so. D'Angelo. Hey, this guy bothering you? <laughs> we got ways of making people squeal. Well, I, I, you literally squealed. I, I really wasn't expecting. That's never happened before. I'm, I'm going to leave. Yeah, that's right. Sprite or fight. Sprite or fight. Get the puncture out here. 
Oh, what you gonna do? Punch me? Oh! <laughs> a misdirect! I can take it! Get the kicker. Oh, I see. I bet this one will punch me instead. Oh! <laughs> they got me good! But spread our fight! you're a doctor? What? James, you're not a doctor. I know, I know. I've dug myself like a little too deep, which is why I really need you guys to like play along with this. Did you lie about us too? Why do we have to get roped in? Okay, look, remember last week's bowling accident? The manager of Boulevard of Broken Dreams has not stopped calling me and I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> so you all owe me. Okay, great. Uh, Bobby, you're gonna be my foreign exchange roommate. Oh, great. Does that mean I get to do like a like an accent? Like like an all your sure of like like English or France or No, I said you're from the Netherlands. What? I don't know anything about the Netherlands. Can we change that? Nah, it's too late. You'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> Vicky, you're in a you're stuck in a chronic state of mind that forces you to believe you are always on a roller coaster. What? Is that a real thing? Jerm, sure. you're our resident bird watcher. I wanted to make you sound like eccentric or something. But I already, I already am one. I'm an ornithologist, James. <laughs> I study birds. Good start, but you gotta be like a little more convincing. <laughs> James, I'm being serious. Okay, Trevor, you're a Nazi. What? <laughs> Why? I told her that I have a diverse set of friends. <laughs> so you went with Nazi? Like, why couldn't I be a foreign exchange student like Bobby? Get back. Two foreign exchange students, no one's gonna buy that. Okay, that's right. Okay. Just roll with it. <clears throat> hey, so glad you can make it. Uh, uh, this is Morris. He's from the Netherlands. I haven't been there myself. You could say I have uh, Netherlands. <laughs> like, never mind. Here he is. Hey. Uh, hello. <laughs> Never went yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, this is Vicky, my, uh, my poor, poor friend that I told you about. Oh, the roller coaster rider. Yes, she got stuck in a tragic accident where one of the carts flew 50 feet off the rails. She was the only one who made it, and now she still thinks she's on the coaster right before it happened. Oh my God. What? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Point out to her. You should. You could say that she can't uh, see der point. <laughs> Get it? It's like, hey, see. No. Okay. Uh, well, on a much sadder note, uh, let's meet my friend the bird watcher. <laughs> sadder? Hey. This guy. You're telling me he watches birds? Actually, I, I studied him. Oh yeah, right. You don't look like a bird guy. You trying to fool me? I'm being honest. Oh yeah? Name a bird. 
Uh, peacock. Those aren't real. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I'm so sorry, Ashley. I didn't realize that he wasn't actually an ornithologist. More like an ornothologist. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, here's my Nazi roommate, Adolf Riddler. <laughs> yup. That's me. Riddler. <laughs> I, I'm a Nazi. Wow, a Nazi roommate. How avant-garde. <laughs> Riddler, say something only a Nazi would. Uh, hey, Hitler? I, I, I thought it was hail. <laughs> nah, we're, we're bros. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, it's my sister. I, what's that? You did? A boy? And, and you're naming him after me? So, so he'll be an eat off. <laughs> eat off. <laughs> eat off Riddler? Because I'm a Nazi. <laughs> Always have been. I, I, I don't even care about your child. Because I'm a Nazi. Also, I hope you have a bad day. Because I'm a Nazi. Wow. I did not see that one coming. <laughs> oh, a good one. Good one. Okay, uh, now that you've like, met all my friends, uh, can we bang? All right, uh, I, I've had enough. James, I'm not actually your date tonight. And I know all your friends are pretending, except for that Nazi. He's definitely a Nazi. No, God, no, I'm not! How'd you know? I always knew. <laughs> These are your court summons for the accident at Boulevard of Broken Dreams. <laughs> you are all concerned. I walk a lonely road now. <laughs> a lot of you can tell, comedy is one of the higher arts in society. <laughs> it must be incomprehensible to you all, looking at me in this show thinking, how does he do it? I decided to dedicate this part of the show to you all as a Q&A. That's right, I'll be taking any sort of questions you all have. My friend Anna here, my stenographer, will be recording everything to keep track. So, do we have any questions? This is real. Do you guys have any questions? You there. Sir, how long did it take you to write the show? Uh, longer than a fortnight, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even two. Yes, I started writing it ever since I was young. Next question. Yeah. What's your uh, shoe size? It's enormous. <laughs> uh, next question. Uh, you there, all the way in the back. Um, did you write the whole thing by yourself? Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm just simply superior in all writing skills. <laughs> you there in the very back. Hi, Jack. I just wanted to say that I hate the show. I think you're not funny. This whole production is a sham, and I hate you. You think I'm dumb and you're so smart because you wrote some jokes? Fuck you! Eat a dick! Eat my dick! Eat a good brilliant dick! I hope your mother disowns you for writing that fucking airplane bit. I hate you. I hate you so much that I'm gonna get a tattoo.
tattoo of you on my chest and then have it immediately removed <laughs> so that I can watch you get vaporized like a fucking clam. <laughs> That's right, clams get vaporized now. It's 2023. Get with it. I don't think you marry the most beautiful person on earth. Find a nice honeymoon location, get ready to do dirty. And then wham! I take off my mask and it's me you're having sex with. <laughs> Pistachio ice cream. 
Whipped cream. Raspberries? This, this is going to be easy. All right. All right. What's the? These are pills. <laughs> these are my pills. My doctor prescribed. Is this where they went? <laughs> what are they for? Oh, it's just my chronic falling down and dying syndrome. <laughs> I hit the floor, I instantly die. No time for that. The point is that timer starts now. You know, I was really hoping the judges would be here by now. Well, I got this, this text. It says, I'm in the floorboards. I'm in the floorboards. No one will find me. <laughs> Chef Van, what are you making for me to look at? <clears throat> well, Chef, ice cream is too obvious, so I'm turning the ice cream into a paste and poofing off blue fla 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 I think I'll just put it in a bowl. Really? That's it? <laughs> it's ice cream. What do you want from me? Like a milkshake? I mean, that would like make sense. But I don't, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you put in no effort this whole time. You let me. I'm not a cook. I can act, or at least I thought I could. But this thing is tough, and I am no Emma Stone. Please. <laughs> you don't see me complaining about not being a jazz pianist. When I want to be a jazz pianist and owner of a jazz club. <laughs> <laughs> That. I'm an actor, you're a jazzer. We're just two unlikely souls that have met in an unlikely time. It's like we were made for each other. <laughs> <laughs> Pretending to choke oh, them. Oh, 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 stop. What? Well, that way they didn't see it coming. And no, 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 no. What did you call them? Uh, raspberries? Are you pronouncing the P? Is that how you say it? No, it isn't. We shall. Stop saying that. I just did. Raspberries. Thank you, Chef. Stop, stop saying that. We shall. We shall. Okay. Unbelievable. All right. Connor, what did you... You remember my name? Stop interrupting. I can't believe this. I can't do this with you people. This might be it. This might be my breaking point. I might quit. Yeah! Follow your jazz penis dream. <laughs> penis! It's jazz penis! And stop pretending you get me. You don't get me. I'm not pretending. You're probably as good as Stevie Wonder or Herbie Hancock or Ryan Gosling. <laughs> you think so? Sure. Thanks. You know, I'm sure you're a great actor. I don't know about that. I need to go this. Don't kid you. You're pretending again. It's like you're imagining things. What? You think I'm living in like an imaginary world? A cuckoo mindscape? A la la land? <laughs> yeah. No, I look, I just you think we both have potential. Don't think that means there's something here, because there's nothing here. I'll be the one to make that call. There is nothing between oh, us. Oh, your call, and you agree. Yes, yes, there's nothing. Nothing. What a waste <laughs> of a lovely night. <laughs>
submitting myself to being a kiss ass. It's pronounced raspberry, motherfucker. <laughs> the kiss has become the ass. No! I am kick ass now! I'm gonna kick your ass! The way I see it, the only way for me to win this is if I'm the only one left standing. That is not at all how cooking shows work! Ah! Hey guys, uh, sorry we're late. Traffic was H E double L's. Uh, <laughs> who are you? Why, the judges? Of we got lost in the woods and the floor. Let's take these desserts. Is this pistachio ice cream? You win. Writers. Thank you to Gavin from Pit Tonight Production for being in charge of the lights and Woo! audio.